Coming up on the Paper Talk today, we'll be chatting a little bit more about Sheikh Jassim. Why not? We never stopped talking about him. And what is going on with this bid that never was? We'll get into all that. Also, we've been linked with a couple of strikers, some old school strikers as well. It feels like it's 2018 all over again with some of these links that I'm hearing. Let's check it out. Jay here for Stretford Paddock. This is the paper talk. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford and it is absolutely freezing. Make sure you've got your parkers on. You might even want to put an extra pair of socks on. Loads of stories to get through, so we will crack on. It's the morning after the night before. The night before being this revelation about Sheikh Jassim's bid. And I say bid in inverted commas. The SEC, SEC filings that have revealed, according to many reports out there, including The Guardian, The Telegraph, uh, Ben Jacobs as well, who we've had on the channel. Lots of people reporting that the the filings show that Sheikh Jassim failed to provide the proof that he had the necessary funds to buy Manchester United for the amount of money he was promising to buy Manchester United for, for his bids basically, and he was unwilling to pay the same amount of money for the Class A and B shares. There's loads of reports about this. The Guardian were going quite heavy on it this morning and last night. We've seen it in the Telegraph, and Ben Jacobs did a sort of a, a series of tweets explaining what is going on. We spoke about it a little bit on Transfers Live as well. The sort of crux of all this comes, it comes down to, the crux of all this is basically, there was, there's no evidence that Sheikh Jassim was able to follow through with those promises that he made now. In the interests of fairness and clarity, it's worth saying that Ben Jacobs was also tweeted out that there's been this sort of pushback from Sheikh Jassim's camp. They saying they want Manchester United to roll back on what they're saying in these SEC filings, SEC filings, saying that that's not fair and that's not true. So we'll have to wait and see how it develops. But at the moment, it looks like Sheikh Jassim didn't show he had the money to buy Manchester United for the, the price that he was saying he was going to. Certainly not to make all the promises that we were hearing about a new stadium, uh, clearing all the debt and all the rest of it. Now, to me, this could be a number of things. It could be that Sheikh Jassim didn't have the backing of the, the Qatari family or the Qatari fund or whatever you want to call it, that it probably would have need, he probably would have needed to go through with, with some of his promises that perhaps they would have maybe further down the line have provided that proof if they'd have felt they were going to be the successful bidder. Maybe that's a, an option. Maybe it was a case of him jumping the gun a little bit or maybe they were sort of waiting to see how this all panned out. I don't know is the honest answer. But what we do know is that according to everyone's reports and what we're seeing is there's nothing to show that Sheikh Jassim was going to buy Manchester United for what he promised to buy Manchester United for. We can't see any evidence of that. It sounds great for a lot of people and a lot of people are keen on it and looks at it as the, the answer to all our problems and I get it. Because you look at it, okay, here's someone who's going to come in, build us a new stadium, clear the debt, buy all these players. It sounds wonderful, but it doesn't look like it was true. So Jim Ratcliffe obviously has bought a 27.6% share in Manchester United or whatever it is. Now, according to these reports as well, he gave the Glazers an ultimatum. He got fed up with all this coming and going and the to and fro and all the rest of it. And he said, I want a decision by Christmas Day or I'm pulling out. He gave them an ultimatum and... It worked because they said, OK, then. And he's now a part owner of Manchester United. We've seen him doing the rounds. He's been obviously been here at Old Trafford, something that Sheikh Jassim didn't do, of course, when he came to meet the club. So Jim Ratcliffe came here. Sheikh Jassim didn't. Look into that, what you will. Uh, but uh, so Jim Ratcliffe's been here for the Spurs game. He met with most and some supporters groups, a fan forum and all that. He met with some of the press as well. And he's been making the right noises and saying the right things. There's also a report in the Daily Mail. It's worth noting, I saw this this morning, saying that if you look at part of the deal, that in 18 months, if the Glazers wanted to sell to another bidder, sell the entire club to someone else, they could do. Now, Sir Jim Ratcliffe would have first refusal if he can match that bid, but if he didn't, then the club could go somewhere else. It's highly unlikely that happens. If he's got a first refusal, he's a very wealthy man. Obviously, he's put him in his own money into the club. He's bought a chunk of it. I'd be very surprised if that happened, but it's worth noting because it is being reported on. Should we talk about transfers anyway? Because I don't know about you, but I've had enough of the Sheikh Jassim bidding war drama to last me a lifetime. Um, in terms of transfers, outgoings, I'll tell you he isn't going anywhere. Ahmad Diallo, he's staying. I've seen this in the Manchester Evening News and various other reports as well. He isn't going to Middlesbrough or anywhere else. There's talk of him maybe going back to Sunderland. He went there on loan. He's staying at Manchester United. It looks like Facundo Palestri could be going, though. Granada looks like a likely destination for him. We'll keep you posted if we hear anything on that front, but 
It'd be good to see Diallo getting some minutes. He obviously came on against Nottingham Forest. Very talented young lad. Did well at Sunderland last season. 13 goals in the Championship. Now is the time for him to kick on and hopefully get more minutes at Manchester United and show us what he's about. And I think there's an opportunity for him. We're struggling on that right-hand side where he can play. Anthony has done nothing this season, really, has he? For Kundo Palestje, he looks like he's going out on loan. Marcus Rashford, who plays on there, doesn't look right. He looks much better on the left-hand side. Ganacho can play then, he plays there well. But you need another option. You need someone else who can also come in, not just one player. So, hopefully, that can be Ahmad Diallo and he can do the business. If he is going to do the business, he's likely to be a sort of alternate option if, if Ganacho makes the right-wing position his own. But it'll be good to see how that pans out. And I'm glad to see that he's staying at the club. Get involved in the comments and let us know what you think about that. In terms of incomings... Now, there's a few sort of stories doing the rounds, which you've kind of been here before. There's one I think has come from Lequip, and that's about uh, Gonzalo Ramos. Now, he's at PSG, isn't tearing up trees there. There's talk that he could be linked back with a move to, not back, but with, another, with a move to Manchester United, because he was linked with a move to Manchester United in the summer, obviously went to PSG. Now, the, the, the Lequip and, and a few other papers are saying he could end up coming to Manchester United because they're a bit underwhelmed by him uh, in, in Paris. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. Decent player. Hasn't really done much this season. We know we need a striker. Is he going to be the answer to our problems? I'm not so sure. But as always, we'll keep you posted because we know we're going to be in the hunt for a striker in the summer and they are in short supply. So maybe he's one we look at. A lot may depend on how his season pans out. For both him and Paris, they may, PSG may feel differently at the end of the season. So want to keep an eye on. Also, this one's doing the rounds as well, which is a bit of a surprise. I think this has come from HITC and has been reported, I think, in the Mirror and a couple of other places that... Um, United have been offered or could get Moyes Keane from Juventus. Now, he's having a bit of a torrid time of it this season. I think he's had 12 appearances, something like that. No goals. Six of them appearances have been starts. Isn't really happening for him. He's one of those players, Keane, that you think he must be about 30 by now. The amount of football he's played, how long he's been around. But he was playing in, like, the top, top tier football. When he was about 12, he's been around for that long. Now, it's not happening for him in Turin this season. And also, it hasn't been happening for him for a little while. I don't think he's the answer to our problems. He was obviously in the Premier League with Everton. Didn't really tear up any trees there. Started off well, didn't he? He was a sort of wonder kid and everyone was loving him. And then it's kind of petered out a little bit for him. And I just don't know if he'd be the answer to any problems. I know we're desperate for a striker. We need someone in. We basically have just got um, Rasmus Hoyland and Anthony Marshall, who I'll get to in a minute. So we do need someone else. And there's another report saying that Sir Hugh Grassi isn't going to come to Old Trafford this January transfer window. So maybe Keane is an option. I just think he's a very underwhelming option because, like I say, no goals this season. I mean, is that going to be the answer to the issues? I mean, it just sounds like a, another Vote Vegos, doesn't it? It's just like, let's get someone in. And at least Vote Vegos did a bit of a job for us. Could Keane do a bit of a job for us? I'm not so sure. My overriding memory of Moise Keane was when he was here with Everton. He came on a sub and then got subbed. Remember Duncan Ferguson brought him on and brought him off and he's trudged off down the tunnel. I know that doesn't mean he's a terrible footballer, but... Yeah, he's not someone I'd be dead keen, pardon the pun, to see at Old Trafford. Get involved in the comments. You may feel differently. Anthony Martial, I want to talk about him. There's an article in the Daily Mail, I think this was doing the rounds last night, from Matt Hughes, one of my old lecturers, saying that Anthony Martial is being trained, he's training sorry, on his own because he's still not fully match fit. And his fitness after this illness he's had, Eric Tanag doesn't think it's there and he's not ready to train with the first team at the minute. So... We'll have to wait and see what happens. This is being paid. Oh, you know, oh, he's terrible, Martial, what's going on? I'm kind of done with hammering Martial. He's not been good enough for about three seasons now. His injury record is abysmal. He was great when he first came onto the scene. He had a great season under Ole, but it's not been happening. I think it's best for all concerned if he moves on in the summer. You may disagree. Get involved in the chat in the comments. And let me know what you think about that. And any other transfer stories. There's also another one doing the rounds about us being linked with Joshua Xerxes. That one's doing the rounds, the, the Bologna striker. So one to keep an eye on. There's a few little tiddlers out there. So let me know what you think about any of them. We're going to be back later on with Off The Bar, myself, Joe Smith, Stephen Housen and Adam McCullough. So make sure you are hitting like, share and subscribe. I've been Jay Motte outside a very cold Old Trafford. Thanks for watching.